Bill Westbrook. <laughs> That's incredible. Don't I? CJ combining for 68 points, 23 assists, and a win over the Kings. <laughs> Richard, I'll ask you the simple question. Do the Blazers have the best backcourt in the league? Yes. Christian James and Dame Dalla are the mm-hmm. best backcourt in this league currently. I, I, they're... Robert? No, but don't hide. You know, I, I'm not going to say they're the best. I'm not going to say that. I love Dame. I love him to death. But think about it. Bradley Bill's putting on a show. Westbrook is an MVP, triple-double. So there, there's an argument for a lot of other duos out there. <laughs> I, but my thing is this. Don't, don't, yeah. don't hide behind it. If I was that guy, he was like, today? I, I, I didn't tweet. He's like, no, look. At the end of the day, just scared, say this. Man. Say this. Say this. what you're going to hey, say. Look, do you have an MVP? <laughs> have you played in the finals? Because... That duo has an individual that has done both. Well, yes. I would say, though, that Westbrook has not found his footing quite yet with the Wizards right now, and I would certainly give it to Damon CJ, or as you have yeah. taken to calling him. Chris and James. There we go. <laughs> Welcome guy. to The Jump. I am Rachel Nichols alongside a couple of NBA champions, Richard Jefferson, Robert Ori. I would like to brag that between the three of us, we have eight rings. That's yes, the right way to say it, Richard. That is right. right. I, I like to I say I don't think we need to say mm-hmm. anything more. Who has seven on this We're panel? We're team, baby. We're be, team. Yeah, there we go. Yes. So kind. Coming up, how good are the Rockets now after acquiring Victor Oladipo in that massive four-team blockbuster trade? We will discuss the Houston side of things in a moment, but You know where we're going first. Yeah, Brooklyn. It says something about a trade. If we can simultaneously have been talking about it, possibly happening for months, and have it knock everyone over when it comes through. Durant, Harden, Kyrie, all on one team. It's a dazzling collection of basketball talent. Durant on his way to proving he's right back up there with LeBron as the best player in the NBA. Harden, one of the game's greatest ever scorers, who's finished top five in MVP voting six of the past seven years. Kyrie is the league's best ball handler who can flat out perform magic around the hoop. They are three of the most outrageously talented players in the league. But there are also, of course, three of the NBA's most um, distinct personalities, making all of this potentially explosive in about 100 different directions, both good and bad. So what does happen when three crazy kids moved into one of those (laughs) Brooklyn lofts together to try to take on the world? I'm glad you asked. Yes, in honor of this mega trade, The Jump presents our latest show within a show. Three's Company, Brooklyn edition. And just like with Jack, Janet, and Chrissy, you can expect plenty of hijinks. Why do you got Kyrie's face looking like that? As we see how this group meshes. Why did they put him in Chrissy's spot, though? (laughs) Now, executive producer, I'm I mean, Nets general manager Sean Marks is optimistic. Here he was this morning talking about the screaming neon elephant in the room, team chemistry. Look, I think whenever you're meshing personalities, I think we've got to wait and see how this all fits on the floor and so forth. I think these guys have um, given us the right answers. They, um, they've said, hey they, hey, they want to play together. They can see this fitting. I think they're at a time in their careers. They understand that there's without a doubt going to be some nights where one or two need to sacrifice for the other and so forth. But I think they're all looking for that common goal. Marks added that Harden and Durant already knowing and liking each other should help speed the team building process here. Perhaps, although as he was speaking, it was hard to not think about how that same scenario went so wrong between Harden and Russell Westbrook that Russ asked out after just one season. As for the Kyrie angle, Marks denied that Kyrie's current situation spurred the Nets to finally pull the trigger on this trade, insisting it was not a hedge to give Durant a more reliable co-star. He also noted Kyrie is, quote, very excited to return to the team after his mysterious absence. But honestly, none of that addresses what is going to be the real issue going forward. Is Kyrie going to be okay with essentially being the third option in Brooklyn behind two former MVPs? We know part of why Kyrie asked out of Cleveland was because he didn't want to continue shaping either his game or his standing on the team around LeBron anymore. We know there were issues coexisting with teammates in Boston. We know that in other recent big threes, guys like Kevin Love, Chris Bosh have had some trouble adjusting to that third role. And these two guys, well, they're at least notoriously mellow. At least Kyrie plays a different position. He will have the ball in his hands more. Maybe Ray Allen. And- Boston is a better comparison. Also, clearly it is something to watch, as is how this team, how this Nets team looks on the defensive end. 
With Jared Allen out the door, the Nets no longer have anyone who you would call a defensive standout. In fact, five of the Nets' key rotation players had a negative defensive real plus minus last season. That's a lot. Still, all Brooklyn really needs is a functional level of team defense, something KD and Kyrie, and yes, at times, yes, even James, have shown to be capable of. So if they want to play hard on that end, they can. Also, let's be honest, there's going to be plenty of nights, at least in the regular season, they won't have to. In a year where there is no plan to hold an actual all-star game, Brooklyn should have plenty of that vibe nightly. At their best, we could see a three-ring circus of death-defying feats of basketball brilliance. Will it be enough to threaten the defending champion Lakers at the very top of the NBA pyramid? We'll have to see. Will it be enough to cause an arms race in the East with the Bucks, Sixers, Heat, or Celtics now trying to pull off their own big trades? We will see. Will it be three? Been in playing well. The difference between this three and let's say the, go the big three that Golden State had with Kevin Durant, those guys were all ball movers and shooters, right? Clay Thompson was moving off screens. Clay was moving off screens. The three of these guys are all ball handlers. Uh, I'm, I'm still looking at this team like, um, who's going to take over? Because when right. we look at James Harden, he gets his rhythm by playing with the Rock. KD playing with the Rock. Mm -hmm. Kyrie playing with Rock. So that is going to be trouble because they're not shooters like Steph and, and Clay who can come out and shoot the ball. So this big three is a little bit worrisome for me because they all playing with the Rock. And now who's going to play defense? Who's going to come off the bench? They gave away, the, away uh, a lot to mm -hmm. get this guy. And now they have nothing because at the end of the day, you need what people like to call the others, the bench to step mm -hmm. up. They have no bench. They have you know, nobody to step up. So I'm looking at the three J's, Jeff, Jordan, and um, <laughs> other guy the shooter to come off <laughs> Joe Harris uh, yeah Joe, Joe Harris, Harris yeah. to shoot the ball and play they gotta they gotta step up and we yeah. know Jordan is old he, yeah. we don't know how yeah. he's gonna st step up so <laughs> you know I know how it is when you get up in the age and still trying to compete yeah I mean, we, we both do but the, the crazy thing is too is when you look at it obviously there's questions about Kyrie what what his situation is mm -hmm. and then James Harden is obviously not in the championship shape that he has been the last few years and when we and that gets fixed over this course this but, season, but, but that's but, but this is my thing like look at this picture here this was james harden going into the bubble people were talking about how yeah. amazing shape he was now he over jumped this shape and went to the next <laughs> position so he went from super super skinny to uh, and this he did this now yeah and he did this in about a three month span so that obviously some of that is probably unhappy and he's not wanting to be there and we're just not going <laughs> to allude to other things but to win a championship and we're talking about winning championships you got to be you no know body shaming form. on this show richard I, it's not body shape i'm saying he's unhappy <laughs> he's i'm like, unhappy I think come on fine. you know you look at his body and you look at same thing with jokic was, last year fine. jokic wasn't in great shape he got in great shape they went to a conference final okay so let me you guys have both been in versions of this kind of situation you played on a team right with vince carter with jay kidd Robert, I can name several teams that you played <laughs> in, several locker rooms with big personalities, big, huge stars. How does it sort itself out? How does that work over the course of a season? You have to have someone that's not one of the big three who's willing to step up and say, hey, guys, it ain't about you three. It's about us as a team. I want to win a championship just as bad as you guys. Just because you're making the most money, you're getting the most you know, notoriety. I'm still on this team. You know, I'm looking at Jeff Green to be that guy. Huh. He's a voice of reason. People forget he's played with KD mm -hmm. before when KD first came into the league. So he might have his ear. So he can talk to these guys and say, hey, listen, it ain't about you. Let's work this thing out and play together as a team and win a championship because that is the goal to cement our name in history. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and the last thing I'll say is this. Look, now KD's won some championships, right? Kyrie's won a championship. James Harden is the one that hasn't, right? So... I know that these guys are motivated, but there is a different type of motivation when you're searching for something that you yes. haven't found yet, yep. right? And it's like, look, they've won all the awards. Kyrie's won the Rookie of the Year. He's won all the other stuff. He's probably not going to win an MVP with this team. But I'm just saying it's like, what are they fighting for? And so when you're trying to fight for something you haven't gotten, uh, there's easier to make sacrifices a la the big three, a la the Miami big three. They're fighting for something that they haven't gotten yet. So that's one thing about this Brooklyn team. Are they full already, right? Right. I mean, it's like you, when you were with the Nets, you stepped right. up and said, look, I know I'm far and away so much better than you, Jason Kidd or Vince Carter, but I'm well, willing to Well, this is up. the best thing that ever happened to me playing on that those <laughs> teams. Is on, most nights, I got the third, shut up. I got the third <laughs> best defender on most right. nights. I got the third best. Uh, uh, ask, you, ask you something about me. <laughs> Good, so I, uh, first question, uh, how to play with Boban. Second question, why I'm love for him. 
Aw, thank you, Bovon. This show offs. Mavs, Hornets, Luca, all uh, alone. Dunk it! Bench wants a dunk, but but he just lays it in. Ooh. Rob, why? Why? Why deny us? Well, you gotta understand, he's trying to reserve his energy. He no. He has to reserve his energy for MVP, man. He can't just show off all every night. He can't show off, man. He gotta, just, you know, you can't relax, dunk man. an uncontested layup. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Because you hey, know what? In the postseason, look, somebody's going to track that down and block it. Hey, but look, look, look the landing. He's you know, kind of he's still a little gimpy. Look, they look they disappointed. There. They wanted a windmill. <laughs> yeah, but you know that Rick Carlisle is out there going, that's very sensible. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what... Uh, yeah, that's what all the coaches went through. That's what Larry Brown. <laughs> that's what Larry Brown went I respect him because look Francis at the score. Then. You don't want to show out. That's not true. Respecting the score. That's the tone. Time Make there. resourcefulness. <laughs> Next, Knicks. Check oh, out this nifty tip pass. She owes her. So we Man. found a comp, Richard. Oh yes. With Jason Kidd. Watch this pass by J. Kidd. Speaking of Lucius Harris, there's my guy. You wasn't gonna get that pass. All right. Lucius. So which was right. the better net Nets <laughs> combo pass at Madison? Well, Park let Park. me say this: the pass was there's better by Jason question. Kidd. The player that caught the pass was better. I mean, <laughs> and, uh, Kevin Durant. You didn't need to on a national television like, okay, show to say that. You saw which one? Who was the better player? There? The, the better. No, the better. See, the be that's a great by Chioza because look at that. That's nice. Yeah. I give him that. Let's I think look at that. You I think it was a mistake, that. though. But Jason Kidd would hook Jason you up Kidd. every day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's put it this way. Him. Love Jason yeah. Kidd. He's got the second most assists in NBA history and the most to me in his individual <laughs> career. Just Richard saying. Jefferson history. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have it. Gotta tell my kids. Miscommunication. Bucks Pistons. Giannis gets it on the wing. Oh, why would you the run him off? The paint just oh. opens up. Um. Well, I believe that would qualify as a defensive breakdown, Robert. Yeah, that's posterizing. Guys, like, that's James Harden. I mean, that's defense that nobody wants to play. They're just trying to get on the other end, shoot some threes right there. You got to play some type of defense. No, but come on. Let's, not talk, about, to get let's not talk about those four. Let's talk about Blake. Blake, what are you doing <laughs> running Giannis off the line? I know. Stop. Right, come on. He took off He took off where, where he was about to shoot from. <laughs> wait, wait. What? <laughs> Come on. It's like, all right, you're oh, moving. Don't play for it. Yeah, Blake can't look at the other four As guys. Coach, like, what are you doing? You got to time out, and I'm yelling at yeah. all, everybody. Everybody. Yeah. What would Pop have done? Pop, Pop would have taken Pop all took five everybody out. out. <laughs> Pop, y'all go to the locker room. Oh, y'all out. <laughs> Big elevation airplane mode activated. Ooh. Derek Jones Jr. getting up for two huge slams against the Kings. Richard, is he the bounciest player in the league? Ooh, I look when you win dunk contests and your nickname is Airplane Mode. Look, he's looking down in the rim. Yeah, I would say he's up there. He, I don't want to give him number one, but he's definitely top two. Yeah, he's, he he's, top, he's top top three. I give him top three. Yeah, he's top two, and he ain't number two. It's Let's just say it that dunk way. contest. Contestants probably say, "Hey, I still got hops." Mm -hmm. Yeah, Those shout out my guy Aaron. A I was going to say a controversial <laughs> dunk contest winner. Yes. So. You know, there you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. Look at that from half court, too. too. <laughs> All right, guys. Lakers ending up beating the Thunder by 29 points. Let's have a little chat about that. Six Lakers scoring double digits. Now, after the game, LeBron asked about the Harden and Nets trade, and here is what he said. I don't really have too much of a reaction. Um, you know, obviously, trades and things happen every year. And, uh, you know, for me, you know, my, my main focus on what we do here how we continue to get better. Um, and that was the case today. You know, um, you know, the trades happened today, and I couldn't allow myself to kind of indulge in that, knowing that we had a team that we had to play tonight. So my main focus today was on the Thunder. Well, LeBron doesn't want to look ahead, but we sure as hell do. <laughs> Richard, which team is better on paper? On paper, obviously, the Nets or the Lakers? Oh, the Lakers, you don't disrespect the champion. The Lakers are, are the best team in the NBA. They were last year and they are this year. That team on the right has a lot of work to do as far as building the chemistry to get to a championship. It's never just. That's why I said on paper. I know on paper, but we can't even just. On tease paper, a little bit. on the floor, Lakers by far. Because okay. if you look at that team, LeBron's going to have an off night to play defense. That's going to make him that much better if those are the lineups. So there's no way the Nets can even contend with the Lakers. Their bench is not there, their starters are not there. Not taking away from their three big three, but if you look at that Lakers squad, they, but, but, got, some they got a skill set like okay, the other so, with the additions they just had. And real quick, let's talk about the yes. Nets. If the Nets, if Kyrie comes back 100% healthy, James Harden gets mm -hmm. in championship condition, 
right? Everything starts rolling for the Nets. Mm -hmm. They are a huge problem. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot more ifs. The Lakers already are a problem. They are the champion. They are the team that's favored to win the championship. So when you look at which team has more work to do to get to peak championship form, it's it, it's the Nets. And so, you know, even on paper, I think there's a lot more for the Nets. But boy, I love I love that roster right now. I like what they have. I like the stars. It makes it fun to watch basketball. Is that really a roster yet, though? Well, it's a it's, roster. It's a roster. Let's see if it's a team. I've got, like That's I said, they, it's paper. They still, they still, <laughs> and, and the paper. Nets still have some, paper. some cap room to, you know, bring in some, some other, some, you? I don't, whoever. No, not me. Uh, I'm right here. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. But there's nothing out there. Follow up on your LeBron defensive point and yeah. sort of the larger point we've been talking about about defense on the Nets side. I'm looking at our ESPN stats and info group, and they're saying that uh, LeBron James allowed opponents to shoot just 30% when he's the contesting defender, which is by far the best in the NBA so far this season. So if you are looking at sort of was LeBron's defense going to drop back off a little bit this season after he made such a concerted effort last year, is he setting the same tone in the regular season now after such a short offseason? Numerically, the answer so far is yes. So we'll have to see in the hypothetical finals between those two teams. N numerically, he wasn't guarding KD, James Harden, and Kyrie on well, one possession. That's why he has KCP, AD, and Tell other him. guys. So you don't have fun. to play. <laughs> yeah. Up next, we will Welcome in longtime Rockets reporter, our insider Tim McMahon, to discuss with James Harden. Three point games was back in 1982, Moses Malone. I wasn't even born there. Rest in peace. I wasn't even born there, you know. Um, you know, Hall of Famer. But you got your rhythm going now. Thanks, James. <laughs> that 2015, the beard was feeling sassy. That was a Hall of Fame moment. He actually That's recreated this so funny. for us at Media Day. Watch this. Man. There we go. It, it, it wasn't James. the same. It wasn't the same. All right, that had to make the top five. Number four, 2014. Ooh. Aaron Baines on a poster. Oh, that's like, you could do James Harden highlights right. all show. Yes. But this man's got enough highlights to just. You know, when you fill left handed, it. you get more people with dunk than anybody because they're so used to right handed guys. Oh, no. Kelly Oubre been catching. But he too. also does this 2019 breaking Jamal Murray's ankles hard. You got no business being out there on his body like that. Hey, what are you thinking, Jamal? I'm like, <laughs> are you serious right now? <laughs> I'm like, a lot of these angles. You know that's not the last. You, you know, know the shoot. You too. know the Clippers are about shoot to get on the highlight. Here come the. I ain't seen it. 2019. Beat Dubs and OT. You ain't got to look at Draymond. Talk to him like that though. Uh oh. Nice. That, you know. But that's what made the point. I know. I just <laughs> best defenders in the game on you and the and, and, and one. Yeah. And look at that. Yeah. Two of them. Two of the best defenders right. Look at there. that. Woo. And nice. you know. Look at them. You guys know what was going to be number one. You know what was going to oh, be you number one. 2018, Harden snatching Wesley Johnson's ankle. Oh, my ankles. God, Wesley. And then now look at him. Ankle breaker. There's, there's nothing better because after this, Wesley. he licked his lips. He actually <laughs> looked at him and licked uh, his lips. That's not oh, cool. And then talked about it afterward. Oh, no, no, no. That takes a mm, lot of gall. Mm, good. That boy, that's James. Woo. I remember like it was yesterday. <laughs> Just the entire sequence, and you know, as I got ready to shoot my shot, and I looked down, he was looking at me and kind of like a face off for like two seconds, and it was just like, and I kind of felt bad, but then I wanted to wait a little longer. It was just an instinct, it wasn't like I wasn't trying to be disrespectful, it was just my lips was dry a little bit. <laughs> He wasn't trying to do anything disrespectful, guys. Kids, go home and Google Randolph Childress. I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> Randolph that Childress, kid. Best. Google <laughs> Randolph Childress. That, until that play, Randolph Childress thing was the most disrespectful thing that I had seen on the map. But it's yeah. not anymore. It ain't not anymore. That. All right, we are now thrilled to welcome in ESPN reporter Tim McMahon, who has covered the Rockets for a long time. You have leading the league in usage rate among reporters in this last month or two. Tim, of course, now with James leaving the Rockets, he is the second leading scorer in franchise history behind Hakeem. Harden, first in assist, three pointers made, free throws, all star spot in eight seasons as Rockets. So, given the long picture, not just this morning when everyone woke up, but big picture, what should James Harden's legacy in Houston be? You know, I, I really think it is a complicated legacy. He is, with all due respect, Moses Malone and, and, and you, Robert. He's the second <laughs> best player in franchise history. But 
Unlike Akeem, he did not deliver a championship. Unlike Akeem, he did not, you know, stay in Houston for his entire prime. And then obviously this was a bitter divorce. And I think part of Harden's legacy is obviously the individual brilliant. He was a perennial MVP candidate, won the MVP, the scoring titles, the assist titles, revolutionized offensive basketball in the NBA. But there's also the short shelf life with his hand-picked co-stars. Three years, then he couldn't wait to get rid of Dwight Howard. Two years with Chris Paul. One year with Russell Westbrook, then they, then they both wanted out. And so I think that has to be considered part of, like I said, what is really a complicated legacy for James Harden with the Rockets. What do you guys see as Harden's legacy there? Well, look, this is what his legacy is going to be. No one will ever wear his jersey again, and his jersey will hang up in the Raptors at some point in time. That's the biggest compliment to somebody's legacy. That's that's starting. Yes, it is very, very complicated. Like Tim, he's the second best player to ever play for the Rockets. All of these things are compliments because they have a great like Clyde Drexler. They've had great players. But, oh, but oh, you know, Robert Ori, obviously, they drafted me, uh, so I'm going to count myself in that also. Uh, but, ult but ultimately, I think that's where you look at the final piece of his legacy. Will anybody wear his jersey again? Will it hang up in the Raptors? And the answer is yes. Um, I don't know about that one because hmm. you got to understand, Tillman Fertitta is the owner of this team now. He only had the pleasure of having John the, uh, Harden for three years. So I don't know if he's going to say, okay, going to put him up in the Raptors like the other guys who seem their legacy, those guys are in the Raptors. So it's going to be difficult because if you look at what James did, he never really took him to the promised land. Uh -huh. He asked for all stuff. He got a big contract. He got all these places placed around him, and he left town in the matter they left town. So right now, there is a nasty taste in the mouth of the Houston fans, and that was the most important thing, the Houston fans. But we gave you everything you wanted. We did all these things. And, and, and Tim even when I tried to open up a restaurant for this dude, and he left. And so there's a lot of things that the taste is not so great in Houston. And Houston, all respects champions. So look at Warren Moon, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, but they don't really put him in the Houston football legs because he did not win a championship. Hmm. Tim, I don't know how you see that, and also, by the way, how you see the fact that James did end up going to Brooklyn when we know the conversations were also so hot and heavy with Philadelphia. Philadelphia that was willing to offer him Ben Simmons in return. Did any kind of sort of bad feelings either about Harden wanting to leave or about his old friend Daryl Morey being guy in Philadelphia play into this as well? Well, clearly the bad feelings about Harden wanting to leave didn't impact the final decision because he got his first choice. His first choice was to go to Brooklyn, and then he's like, okay, I'm a, I'll be fine with Philly, and then some other teams I'd add to the list. I, I really don't think that the relationship and, you know, the whatever friction there might be with Daryl Morey was a real factor here. You know, look, Ben Simmons was on the table. The Rockets did not get the young franchise cornerstone that they'd been insisting on getting uh, in return for James Harden. I just think, though, when it got down to it, the historic package of picks that they got back from Nets. That was the deciding factor. The fact that those picks are dated well beyond what will be the primes of Harden, KD, and Kyrie for a rebuilding franchise. I just think that ended up being uh, something that felt like they could not pass up when they basically had to make a deal. Well, you mentioned picks. Also, they ended up with Victor Oladipo out of all of this, Dante Exum, right? So let's take a look. How good is Houston right now? You've got Oladipo joining John Wall in that backcourt. What do you think, Robert? It's the injury squad right now. Everybody's <laughs> coming back from injuries. Are they going to be healthy enough? Because these three guys that he have are great players. Cousins, if he can get healthy, good. Stay healthy. Wall, They're all healthy now. Good. So yeah, stay, yeah. Healthy. Yeah, stay healthy. But if you look at some of them, they're still limping a little bit. I don't think they're 100%. So if they can get these guys and get them healthy, they're fine. But those picks, I'm looking at them using that because there's going to be another disgruntled superstar out there mm -hmm. that's going to say, I want out. And what better place to go than Houston with a, no state tax, no state tax. <laughs> a great team, and picks. So they set themselves up for the future, something down the line. And, and for a guy like Victor Oladipo, I look at Gordon Hayward, mm -hmm. right? Like Gordon Hayward was averaging 17-point game in Boston on a championship caliber team, and people were still saying, like, oh, well, Gordon Hayward. It's like, no, he's good. Now he's averaging 22 night, 22 a night in Charlotte. He's got a little bit more leash. He can have a bad night and not have to worry about people criticism, criticizing him because he's their guy. Victor Oladipo now has the platform, has the runway, go be a high-level score on this team. It's a matter of getting those reps, getting those minutes, and just going out there and playing. So I like what they have at Victor Depot. And to his point, 
if you have all of the picks, that's how they got James Harden. Mm -hmm. They took a trade a couple of players and got a bunch of picks, and then that's what he shipped to OKC to get James Harden. So now it might not be disgruntled. It might just be somebody that's not re-signing. Okay. It could be somebody that's like, I want to enter free agency and they don't want to risk it. So it doesn't always have to be disgruntled. A lot of times it is. <laughs> but there are other scenarios where it's not always such a bad situation and you have all of this stuff that you've yeah. collected to put out there. That's similar to what Dan Ainge did to get Kyrie. Yep. It's just go be a superstar that want to, you know, yeah, see I, the I scratches like on the other side. <laughs> what do you think, Tim? I do think the other thing we need to keep a, we need to keep an eye here on Victor Oladipo before trade. There deadline. we go. Whether Waiting he for this one. fits really well or not. Look, he's an inspiring contract, and I think that's the primary reason he was more attractive to the Rockets and Karis LeVert, who has two years after this year at uh, about 18 mil per year. And Victor Oladipo, as an expiring contract, maybe there's a team that really. Uh, likes what they see. They want his bird rights. Maybe there's a team that you know, just sees value in, in, in having the expiring contract. But that is a, it could be another really significant uh, chip for Rafael Stone, the new Rockets general manager, to play in the trade market. Here, Miami, are you interested in Big Bola Depot? There's a lot of teams you can see him fitting in with. We'll, we'll, have, we'll have plenty of the seasons to talk about that. <laughs> Tim, thank you so much. In this. Regarding Kyrie and when, he, when he'll be hopefully back and rejoining the team, you know, part of that is going to be up for the NBA, and, and we're waiting for them to come out with so they're ruling on the health and safety protocols. Hopefully we'll have a ruling soon. You know, I have talked to Kyrie, so um, I know he's excited about getting back on the court um, with his teammates you know, as soon as possible. You know, without a doubt, I, I'm not going to shy away from it. Without a doubt, the organization's disappointed with not having, you know, any one of our players, in this particular case, Kyrie, not not amongst us, not, you know, you know, in the trenches with us and so forth. So, um, you know, I don't want to speculate and, and say why he's out and so forth. We've got to support whether it's our players or whether it's our staff. And you would do that in, in any industry. But, um, you know, you also hope there is a uh, an adequate, more than adequate excuse as to, like, why he needs personal time. You hope there is a more than adequate excuse as to why he needs personal time. That was Nets GM Sean Marks addressing the absence of Kyrie Irving due to personal reasons. Guys, let's assume Kyrie comes back. Sean also said today he's that Kyrie is very excited to come back. It is up to the league, of course, to see when he can come back with COVID protocols. But if we look at the new big three in action, in the last 10 seasons, only eight players have scored more than 1,000 points in the clutch. Guess what? Out of eight, the Nets now have three of them. And Katie missed the whole season. So, big <laughs> shot, Rob. Who should take the big shot, the last shot, if they're all three on the court? You have to go with Katie because his skill set is by far above those guys. That's saying a lot because he's seven feet tall with the handles of Kyrie with the shooting ability of James. So you got all three rolled in one, so you give the ball to KD and get out the way. That's all you got to do. I remember playing with Houston, getting the large ball. You said, what play do you want? Give the dream and get out the way. <laughs> get out the way. <laughs> That's what you do when you have a player like that. Okay, here, let me answer the question. Steph, greatest shooter of all time. Klay Thompson, one of the greatest shooters of all time. Who was the guy that you wanted to take the last shot? It was Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. He was the guy. Now. I'm James Harden, and you got Kyrie Irving. Monsters. Kyrie's hit one of the biggest shots in NBA history. Kevin Durant is the guy that you want taking that last shot whenever possible. Now, you can't double him. You can't hedge him because you got two other monsters on both sides, right? So it's like, you know, and a lot of it, the last shot is about making the right play. So of if course. you send two people at him, you got James Harden and you got you got Kyrie. Look, that's one of the biggest shots that has ever been taken on a basketball court in mm -hmm. NBA history, right? Nailed it. Easy. Just walks off. So I just think it, it really and truly, it's Kevin Durant. If he was the bet, if he was the one that you wanted on those Golden State Warriors team, he's definitely the guy that you want on this Houston Rockets, or well, on this uh, Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn Nets. You gotta get used to that. <laughs> Brooklyn Nets <laughs> team. And, and look, we know they're all gonna have big shots, right? That's the quality of the these players, as you say, it depends on the defense. Which shot do you think is either more guardable or harder to guard, however you want to phrase it? James Harden step back three. He's had the little sidestep oh, sometimes yeah. now, too. Or the Kevin Durant shot where he's just up over you in a way that is, I mean, we've had some of the great defenders in this league over the last 10 years just say that when Kevin Durant lines up, he's not guardable. But you can't teach tall. Like, that's what they told <laughs> yeah. us all the time. You can't you teach, teach seven. Size. So which, yeah. which one? Which one do you think? The, the Kevin Durant Kevin shot. Durant that's more lethal. Far. That's more yeah. lethal. Yeah, because you can get someone that's either as tall as James Quick mm -hmm. who can get to that shot. 
But there's nobody as tall as KD that can get to that shot. So KD, by uh, far. Like I even take you the Manu Ginobili swat from behind, mm -hmm. you know, uh, against the Rockets. Like you can kind of try and figure out ways to get that done. With Kevin Durant, he's like Dirk Nowitzki. You're not blocking his shot. You're right. not blocking a seven foot, high release, high arcing shot. It yeah, it's, it's happening in history, but it ain't. Unless you get it, it from behind. <laughs> yeah. With Dallas six and four right now. So Richard, are we about to see the Mavs really take off here? Well, I hope so. Again, you have to be super cautious with an individual that has a history now. It's starting to become mm -hmm. a longer history uh, of injuries. Uh, but yeah, if he's 100% healthy, because people forget, not only offensively, he is very good defensively also. So I think it's a great combination of him, him and uh, Luca. He's a very skilled big man. He's a poor man Dirk on that team. He can do everything Dirk could do, but play a little bit better defense. And he needs to stay healthy in order to help this team out. Because if he's not healthy, they're going to be back yeah. where they were last year. Yeah. It changes. And they still have that salary slot for a third person. Mm -hmm. That third person, there was hopes of it being Giannis Antetokounmpo. It will not be Giannis Antetokounmpo. <laughs> so it is interesting now to see what they end up doing with it. But obviously, Porzingis is such a huge part of that equation. I want to head out to Philly. They were right on the brink of making a deal for James Harden yesterday. Ben Simmons' name mentioned in trade reports. Right. Ooh. Just I mean, really, as recently as within 20 minutes of when the actual trade was announced at four Eastern. So according to Mark Spears from the undefeated, Simmons is, quote, pretty ecstatic after not being dealt to Houston. Robert, do you think he should just be glad it worked out the way it worked out? Or do you think he should feel some type of way that they were clearly ready to deal him? Been there, done that. I got traded to Detroit, was in a uniform, getting ready to walk on the court. And they said, wait, Sean didn't pass his physical. And I came back to Houston in a whole different mindset. I said, I'm coming out being the best player I can be and not worry about anything. And I think he needs to understand that this is a business. You're going to get mentioned in trades all the time. That's a compliment. That means somebody wants you. If nobody wants you, your name's not going to be mentioned in trades. Mm -hmm. So he should just go out and use this opportunity to motivate him and show this organization why I was the number one pick in the draft, why you should be happy you kept me, because he is a remarkable player. And if I was Houston, this is the guy I would have wanted. Yeah, and, and look, at the end of the day, the key thing here is who they're mentioning you in a trade for, right, James. right? They're mentioning you in a trade for James Harden. They're like, hey, there's a conversation between, you know, Anthony Davis for Ben Simmons. You're like, right. okay, I get it, <laughs> right? So it's like, you know, understand that like a lot of times when these top 10 players start to shift and things start to happen, big names are going to come up because big names are available. And right. so, uh, yeah, this is the thing. And now, look, Philly was already playing well. Philly was playing well. I know they hit a couple of bumps in the road, but they got off to a great start. So now you can take a little bit of that pressure off and just go and know that you're on this roster. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Robert, that story is pretty incredible. I mean, it's one thing to hear your name <laughs> in trade talks. It's another thing to actually be traded, put on the uniform of your, quote, new team, yes. and then have a good enough attitude upon being shipped back that you went on to win a title that year. Yes, it was 94. I got so happy. I, I, so I was, happy. Listen, I, I'm from Alabama. I do not like the cold. You get to, <laughs> you get to Detroit and it's cold. And I'm sitting there when I don't, uh, I'm not able to play. I'm sitting in the stands and my mom called me that night. She says, baby, you okay? I says, why? She said, you look miserable in the stands.